as the dawning of the day moves us from darkness to light, so will the entrance of God's Word lighten up your life. Stay tuned for the teaching ministry of Charlotte Falver as she presents this light with Bringing to Light Ministries. Today is your day for victory in Jesus. Good day to you. I'm so glad that you have found our program. We're going to get right into the Word of God in a few moments. But I hardly ever say anything about our newsletter. But if you do not receive it, we would like to get that in the mail to you. It is our monthly gift to you. And we share good news from the Word of God. We send our prayer requests. And we give good news items. Don't you need some good news every now and then? But we would like to ask you, if you're not receiving any, would like that, please let us know. Just get uh, your name, your mailing address to us, either through our phone number at the church. You can also go to our website and send it, email it. We would love to get that in the mail to you. Now, Shantae is going to be sharing with us a special word. Please listen carefully as she shares these things with you. Hello, I'm Shantae Hawkman. Many of you have heard about my little boy, Micah, and how he had to go through several surgeries. But the Lord raised him up and healed his little body. We hear in Isaiah 53 and verse 5, it says, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. We know that by Jesus' stripes that He bore upon His back that we are healed. And when the doctors came to us concerning Micah and did not give him much hope, all we could do was hold fast to God's promises and, and to speak the Word of God over and over, that Micah would live and not die and declare the works of the Lord, and that by Jesus' stripes He is healed, and that Jesus sent His Word to heal Micah's disease. And we know today that Micah is two years old and he's running around and he is all boy and God has touched him. But you may be there today and you may have a sickness or a disease or having some pain and you want God to touch your body. We know that we can hold fast to the promises in God's word. And I want to be able to pray with you today. So if you would extend your hands toward mine and let's just believe God together for your healing. Father, I come before you in the precious name of Jesus. And Father, I just lift up each and every person today that is needing a healing in their bodies. And Lord, I thank you that it is by your stripes, Jesus, that you bore upon your back that they can be healed. Lord, I thank you for healing them right now, Father, from the top of their head to the soles of their feet that they are healed in Jesus' name, that all the pain and discomfort to go in Jesus' name. And Father, we look to you for our healing, and we thank you for your promises in your word that we can hold fast for our healing today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Well, praise the Lord. Please write to us or email and let us know your good report and also we are wanting to share a healing cd with you and some healing scriptures so just let us know and we will send those to you today to get your very own copy call us at area code 865-693-0144 or visit us online at www.bringingtolight.org and be sure to include your best love gift to help our ministry Again, that's area code 865-693-0144 or online at www.bringingtolight.org. Well, praise the Lord. We're talking about the scriptural practices of meditation. Meditation is a very powerful thing throughout scripture. And you know, as much as I have meditated the scripture throughout my life, I've really never taught on the importance of meditation. And it seems like since I've come to this time that I feel that the Lord has led me to this, I know I have been getting very excited about what I see as, as I begin to look at these particular passages having to do with meditation. 
uh, on our first broadcast of, of this particular teaching, we saw that meditation means to listen to God's Word. You know, now when we talk about listen, and this is something we learn a lot in counseling, it's one thing just to hear something, but when you really listen, you listen with your heart. You listen with a decision to receive. So listening is a type of meditation. Reflecting on God's Word is a meditation. Rehearsing God's Word, ruminating to go over and over in the mind and in, in the heart, casually or slowly, and then to mutter. And to mutter literally means to verbalize the scriptures, maybe under a, a low breath or even going down the road, just speaking the word of God. It is a type of getting it just from the mind into the heart. And as we have seen in Romans 10, the word of faith is near us, even in our mouth and in our heart, the word of faith which we preach. And I know we use those passages to re uh, lead someone to Jesus in the new birth, but I want you to know for the belief when we're talking about calling upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. We know that it's more than just the new birth. I'm born again already, but I want to walk in the salvation of the Lord. We've seen in Scripture to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. There is a reverence before God that I'm walking out His holy call up on my life. And so in order for me to do that, I need to hear the Word of God. I need to meditate that Word and I need to speak that word so that I can see the promises of God to come to pass in my life. On our last broadcast, we were reading from Psalms in chapter 1 and verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. There are people out there that may call themselves a Christian, but they, they want to give you counsel, but it's not godly counsel. It's not scriptural counsel. This is a reason I encourage people. You know, don't go to those people that you know do not know the Word of God to even pray with you because they can pray for you with doubt and unbelief or unscripturally. We want to go to somebody that is seasoned in the Word of God. And when we do, the Bible says, Blessed is that man that, if you will, walks in the counsel of the godly. Now let's read on. Nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. You know, the Bible says it's good communication. It's good companionship. And we don't want to, to corrupt good morals. And if you are going around with the wrong people, it certainly can. So many times we think we're strong enough that we can be with these kinds of people, but yet we're not. Take heed when you think you stand lest you fall. How many people have I counseled when they were going to be the one to witness to this one or to be an example of Christ to this other one, but yet they ended up pulling them down into areas of sin. We have to be cautious of that. I do want to be a witness to the lost. I do want to be an example before them, but I am not to run around, if you will, with these types of people. Verse 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord or the word of God. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. Doth he meditate, there it is again, or mutters the word day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not, notice this, his leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. And how does that happen? By meditating the Word of God and not associating ourselves with evil doers. You see, this is a reason sometimes I deal with people that have just been born again and they have this circle, if you will, of so-called friends. But what happens is they want to live for the Lord, but they're being pulled by the wishes and the desires of these that are in the world. Let me say this to you. You can't do it. And it may be very difficult to separate yourselves from this type of people that want to live the way this world lives and they want to go after those kinds of things. But you have to cut that off, as painful as it may be, believe in God to give you the kinds of friends that you need. 
It is most important. And for a while, you may feel alone. But listen, if you will get into the house of God, get involved in small groups, you're going to make friends that's going to be a positive influence upon you. Their giftings are going to be a blessing to you. In turn, as you grow and mature, your giftings will be a blessing to them. But notice again, as I meditate the Word day and night, that I can become like a tree. Now notice this, a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. I'm sure you've seen pictures. I know I had the joy of seeing it when, when I've been different places. And I'm thinking right now of Israel specifically. But I remember driving along in a bus and uh, we looked out and it was sand everywhere you could see. But all at once you would look in, in a direction and you would see all kinds of trees. And some of these trees, and the best I remember it was dates. And under these trees were these nets. And the nets were there to catch the fruit so that it would not rot when it would fall upon the sand. But I would begin to look and I would see that there would be a source of water that would be feeding the soil, the earth, if you will, and that's where the trees could spring up and grow. We know that a tree can do well where there's a source of water. But I want you to know the source of our life is through Jesus Christ. And as we have established the Word of God, in the beginning was the Word. And we know that that Word was made flesh and dwelt among men. We see that that Word is God. So as I come and I drink in, if you will, the living waters of the Holy Scriptures, the life of God begins to move in and through me. And what happens? I'm like a tree. And notice what it says here, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. God wants fruit to abound in and through your life and through mine, and it be fruit that will remain. You see, that fruit is going to be an everlasting, an everlasting fruit that's going to make a difference, yes, in this life, but in eternity as we yield ourselves to the leading of our God. His leaf also shall not wither. Notice that. The tree that is planted by the rivers of life or waters, if you will. The scripture says that tree, its leaf will not wither. You can have ongoing life when you are connected to the vine, Jesus Christ. His life flowing in and through you. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. That's a promise. If I stay away from the ungodly, as I cleave to the Lord, as I meditate upon the Scriptures, then the Bible promises that I will prosper. Now, a lot of times people just look at the pocketbook, and I'm not saying God can't bless us financially. He can. But prosperity comes in many, many different ways. You can live a mansion and drive a new car, but if you're sick in your body, you don't feel very prosperous. You know, you may feel well in your body, but if your family is in disarray and there's brokenness in relationships and there's fussings and fightings going on, you don't feel very prosperous. The prosper prosperity that we're talking about comes from the word shalom, which means peace. And God, you know, He talks a lot in Scripture about peace. We know that the Scripture even calls Him Jehovah Shalom, God our peace. Jesus talks about peace, be still, or I will give you peace, not as this world gives, but a peace that I can give. And it's a peace that passes all understanding. You know, all your circumstances may be going haywire, but if you know you're living for the Lord and you know you've confidence, you've meditated the Scripture that God will never leave you nor forsake you and that He's with you even until the end, I want you to know you can have a peace even in the midst of your storm of knowing that God is going to see you through. You may feel like you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death and it may seem like death all over you and around, but I want you to know when you look into Jesus, you look into the author, the developer of your faith, He will see you through that valley. And I love the scriptures that it says then that there is that table spread even in the midst of your en enemies, a place that you can come and dine and receive from the Lord and see and find and experience the abundant life that Jesus Christ came to give to you. So it's important to again meditate the word, all the promises about those who meditate. God spoke to many individuals throughout Scripture, not because of their special abilities, but because they spent time in quietness listening to the voice of God. Now, I want to pause there for a moment. 
Again, this is true and appointed me to begin with. You see, I love the Lord and I know many times going towards the church to do counseling for a whole day, uh, I'm going over maybe in my mind a lot of the people I'm going to see. Uh, I've looked at the reports, I've studied, God, what are you saying for them today? You know, what is it, Lord, you want to minister to them? And many times the Lord will begin to guide me and direct me in what He wants me to, to bring up that day, how He wants me to counsel for that day. And I love it when He does that. But that comes the meditation. Listen, when we're talking about meditating the Word, yes, that is priority. But I want you to know for whatever it is that you need to do in your day, it may be that you're going to have to appear in court. It may be that you're going to have to go on a job interview. It may be that you're going to have to confront an individual. You know, if you had these things coming up, you can get all worried and anxious and troubled about it. And I've caught myself doing that. But when you come to the Lord in prayer and you begin to meditate upon the Scripture, Lean not unto your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge the Lord and He will direct your path. God, right now, I've got whatever it is coming up today. And Lord, right now, if I lean to my own understanding, I think, well, this is going to happen, that's going to happen, maybe this is what I need to say. And I can get in a whirlwind of thoughts that can cause me to feel uh, unrest, tormented, if you will. But when I say, God, I thank you that you go before me, that you bring down the high places and you raise up the low, that my way can be easy, O oh God. I declare the crown of favor round about me that your word says I can have. Lord, I'm believing you, Father, for your best to be done in this situation in Jesus' name. And I may be driving along or I may be sitting in my quiet place. I might pray in the Holy Spirit concerning that situation. And there have been times that I have felt the Spirit of God to begin to give me a direction. He might begin to show me of a question that I'm going to be asked. He may begin to show me of something I'm going to have to face or deal with. If I feel that it's coming from a demonic realm, I'm going to take authority over that right then in Jesus' name. It may be that I do not know uh, how to, to answer in a particular way. And I think, what does the Scripture say about this? Or maybe I need to get counsel. Maybe I need to go to another Christian brother or sister and say, what does the Scripture say about this particular thing? That I am equipped and ready by God to face and to deal with whatever may be coming my way. And sometimes if I don't get that particular word from the Lord, I can just pray in the Holy Ghost about that situation. And you know, it's when I get into the arena of whatever I'm dealing with that I find God guiding my steps, that God begins to direct my path, that He brings to my remembrance things that I need to speak in that time. Listen, we need to get a hold of this truth. God loves us. He doesn't take us and dump us into a group of ravenous wolves that's ready to jump on us and destroy us without equipping us. God loves us and He will give to us whatever we need in those difficult places in life. We need to lean our entire nature, if you will, upon the Lord, knowing that He cares for us and we do not have to be afraid. Samuel learned how to listen to God. Eli had taught him. We see that in 1 Samuel in chapter 3, 1 through 18. Eli said to Samuel, Go and lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, speaking of God, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Well, remember that the word had not gone forth for many, many years until he began to deal with Samuel. You can find that in, in, in Scripture. But Samuel here is just a young man, but he had a heart for the things of God. And we know the story how he came to leave, live with Eli, and Eli was his teacher. But God began to speak his name, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel at that moment wasn't familiar with God's voice to the point he thought it was Eli crying out for him. And you know, sometimes in our lives, God is speaking for us. He's crying out to us. He may be calling our name. He may be speaking a truth to us. But as you begin to see the Word of God and you are sensitive, to, you'll be able to even know the voice of God. What's the Scripture say? I hear the voice of the Good Shepherd. 
but the voice of the stranger I will not follow. If you do not know the word, if you have not listened to the word, if you've not meditated the word, it's going to be very easy for you to yield to what the enemy, the devil, is saying because you have nothing within you to judge who is saying what. So I want you to know that is most important. I just feel really inclined right now to, to give just a bit of my testimony to you and I want to show you how important that this is. And many of you have heard my testimony already, but I remember the day that, I mean, I was already born again and I was already spirit-filled and, and I was already growing the things of the Lord and going to many places and ministering the truths of God's Word. But there was a scripture I did not know, and I'm going to show you that why it was so important for me at that time, but because I didn't know it, I went through a lot of pain and trouble. And that was when I was pregnant with Shantae that speaks here on this television program. But it was Shantae. I was pregnant with her. But the whole nine months of my pregnancy, I was having thoughts that I was going to die at her death. And I did not know that that wasn't of the Lord. I really didn't. I was ignorant to the truths of God's Word. And for some reason, I thought, well, maybe God is, is wanting me to die early and maybe He's going to raise me from the dead for His glory. But I wouldn't tell anybody because I was ashamed of it. So for nine months, I dreaded the day that Shantae would be born. I, li I dreaded the day. Now, is that sad? But when she's born, I have this horrific pain that comes into my body, and it is so bad. They start giving me medicines for it. Well, it subsided some, but I'm hearing this voice saying, now you will die. Well, after hearing that for so long, for nine months, you see, I believed that word. I believed that I was going to die. And after I got home, uh, I was feeding my little girl, uh, Shantae, and the pain came back, and it was so horrific that I began to weep and to cry. And my husband to, was going to take me to ER, I should say, because of the pain. But he called my mother and shared with her, I'm taking Charlotte to ER. And she says, no, bring her to my house. I'm getting a prayer meeting going. Thank God my mother knew to get a prayer meeting going. We drove 45 minutes in the snow to get me to her house. And sure enough, she had a lot of people there praying. When I got out of the car, I knew somebody took my, my newborn baby. I had two little children in the back seat. We're starting into the house and the pain is so horrific that I fall. I cannot stand the pain and I knew someone caught me before I ever hit the ground and they're carrying me. Well, all at once I come out of my body and I'm looking down and I see my body. And I'm so glad to be free from that body because I wasn't hurting anymore. And I watched them carry me into the house. And they laid me up on a couch. But as soon as they did, all at once I felt my spirit man being pulled back into that body and I'm hurting all over again. But now I could hear people and people were coming against demonic forces that would hold me, that would lie to me, that would come against my life. I heard them praying for me in the Holy Ghost. I heard the name of Jesus being declared. And as the pastor of, that I had at that time began to read the scriptures, he said, Charlotte, have you been afraid? And I said, yes. I said, for the nine months I've been pregnant with Shantae, I said, there's been this thought that I was going to die at her birth. Well, you see, as I saw in scripture, that it's our God's will that he satisfies with long life. That's the scripture I did not know. I did not know it was God's will for me to be satisfied with long life. I had listened to the devil tell me the whole nine months that I was going to die. You see, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. But fear comes by hearing and hearing the lies of the enemy. He is a liar and the father of lies, but I can believe his lie and I empower what he is saying for it to come to pass. And that's what happened to me. The spirit of fear has come to me many times since. But now I have a resource of the Word. I have meditated the Word. And I judge those thoughts with what God's Word says so that I can recognize the voice of the evil one and judge it according to what God's Word has already spoken to me, which is truth. And listen, and it's knowing the truth that makes us free. 
You may be bound by fear today. I encourage you to resist it. Get in the Word, meditate, mutter the Word. Let it be rehearsed over and over in your heart that you can resist the lies of the enemy. You can speak the truths of God's Word over you, that you can enjoy life and life abundantly. It's been a joy to be with you today. God's will will be here next time, but until then, may God bless you, and I love you. I love you all. Hello, I'm Shantae Hawkman. Many of you know the story in Matthew 14 and 24 when Jesus walked on the water. And Peter called to Jesus and said, Lord, bid me come. And the Lord said, come. And he walked upon the water. And, but the winds and the waves began to come and distract him. And he fell into the water. But then he cried out, Lord, save me. And Jesus was there and picked up Peter out of the water. You may be in a situation the same today where you had your focus upon the Lord, but now you've been distracted by even maybe sins or, or just worry or fear that would try to come against you. But God wants you to just to cry out to Him. And we know the scripture in Romans and chapter 10 and verse 13. It says, call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. And the Lord just wants us to call upon Him. And He is there to pick us up out of the waters and to bring us back to Him. I want to pray a prayer with you today. If you need to know Jesus for your very first time, if you've never prayed the prayer of salvation, I want to pray with you. But if you are living in sin and just backed away from the Lord and not following after Him today, I would love to pray with you too. But let's read in Romans in chapter 10 and verse 9. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God had, hath raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And we know in uh, 1 John 1, 9, it says that if you confess your sins today, he is faithful to forgive you. So please pray this prayer with me now. Father, I come before you, Lord, and I call upon your name, Jesus, to become my Lord. I ask you to forgive me for my sins and to wash me in your precious blood. I believe, Father, you sent your only son, Jesus, to die for me, that I could be free from all sin and I can spend eternity with you. Father, come into my heart today and be my Lord and be my Savior. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for praying this prayer with me. And please write to us and let us know that you have given your heart to the Lord today.